Like It by Sophie Tucker. That is my first song I ever did. I came to Chicago, entertaining in a gay club. The front page in 1962. According to the columnist, a rumor somehow still persists that a certain gentleman and I have named the date, which I must deny. He's rich and handsome and gallant and everything a gal could want. But I've learned my lesson and anyhow, I like the way I'm living now. Cause I'm a one-ticket gal, free as the breeze. I go where I like, I do as I please. When I lock up my apartment, I've got all the keys. I'm living alone and I like it. If I want to play gin, I stay up and I play gin. I come home when I want to, and when I walk in, there's nobody crawling at me. Where the hell have you been? I'm living alone and I like it. I'm a single bed, one pillow mom. And there's no papa sober or stew Who comes home late to shake me And nudge me and wake me To get up and make whoopee when I'm not in the mood If I want to have some fun, if I get bothered and hot I phone one of those young, tall, dark handsomes that I've got So it cost me a twenty or a fifty, so what? I'm living alone and I like it. No man buys my dresses or pays for my minks if I get a new hat trimmed with posies and pinks, there's no darling husband yelling at me, take it off, it stinks. I buy it, I wear it, and I like it. If I should go out riding with some nice young man, and he makes the pass, I don't have to say yes, I don't have to take any of his stats. Car belongs to me, I'm paying for the gas. He can get right out of the car if he don't like it. When my gentleman friend comes up to my house for dinner, and it's very late when we finish with the wine. If in the morning I make him, his eggs and his bacon, it ain't nobody's business but mine. As you already know, I've had three matrimonial wrecks, and there's not going to be any fourth Mr. X. And I'll have you know I won't sign any more alimony checks. I'm living alone and like this. I was born in Dayton, Ohio, June 25th, 1925. My mother had 14 children. Three died, uh, mostly at birth. One lived to be a year old, but 11 of us lived. I used to get a dress on and play house with my sisters. I had seven sisters. So there was about five of the girls that played with me. and. Uh, I'd always have the highest heels and the prettiest dress. There used to be a neighbor man that come down the street and he was a good looking man and showed a big basket. And my sisters would call me to come out by the fence so I could just say hello to him. That did something to me, just speaking to him and just saying that one little thing. At the age of 18, I was like everybody else. I got inducted into the service. Well, could you ever believe this Nellie-ass bitch was drafted into to the U.S. Army? I was not used to all those butch routines. My hands are small. I don't have a man's hand. And I couldn't hold on to my rifle when we go out on marching, you know. We used to... Uh, go on hikes and whatever, you know, and... And I had a southern captain, and he, he called me aside and he says, where in the hell was you inducted? I said, Cincinnati, Ohio. And he says, well, you should never have passed. I tried to tell him I was a lady. He wouldn't believe me. <laughs> he went to the chaplain the very next morning, and the chaplain called me over and he says, you're gonna go to the hospital. I stayed there six weeks. I learned to play cards there. And uh, During my stay there, I was propositioned by one of the interns. Wanted to come over and thought I'd carry on with him. I thought it was a setup. I said, no, indeedy. They were trying to get something on me, and I wouldn't have anything to do with him. He was a New Yorker anyway. He was a pushy mother. And I also got an honorable discharge and travel pay home. I want you to know. You need boobs. 
to fill out a sweater. You need two, but three might be better. In Dayton, at parties, I would entertain. I would do my uh, Sophie Tucker routine. And then later on, as I got more into it, I added to my repertoire. I was working for a uh, uniform company. Found out that they were going to open a branch here in Chicago. And they sent me here in 1961. My first gay club was the front page. They we used to lock the door so the kids could dance together, the boys could dance together, because then it wasn't allowed, it was illegal. Well, then I heard that Chesterfield was having amateur nights on uh, Sundays. I did it and they, they liked it. So she asked me if I would be interested in working uh, weekends. I said on Friday and Saturdays only, because I still had my uniform job and I had to go to work Monday. Some push him up, some stick him out, and some keep him flapping in the breeze. Some tie them down, because if they don't, they would hang down to their knees just to tease. In the 60s, a gangster had been murdered and stuck in a trunk of a car. Well. Then they raided everything that the Mafia owned, which was all the gay bars. A couple of vice cops came in. They got up on stage and said, this house is under arrest. So he took everybody that worked there. He went to jail. Like I'd robbed a bank and all I did was wear a dress. Finally, the case was thrown out of court. After the raid, there was no Tilly for five years because they had uh, closed all of the gay bars that the Mafia owned. And some have too much, and some like me could stand a whole lot more. After the Chesterfield and the five-year period of no shows at all, finally, in the early 70s, there was more and more gay-owned bars opened. And I worked wherever they wanted to pay for a female impersonator to come and do a show all up and down Hallstatt. And I got to be known, quite, uh, quite well known, I should say. One year, honey, uh, Sidetrax gave me a horse-drawn carriage, honey, and I put a hustler in there with me. And they fixed me up a container, honey, of, of vodka and seven. And that son of a bitch drank it all. Oh, he was so drunk, even the horse didn't want nothing to do with him. Could have killed his ass. I went away from the lights of 43 Street and into my personal haze. But now that I'm back in the lights of 40 Street, tomorrow will be brighter than the good old day. The wind. You put that wig on, that can make you or break you. When I have the dress on, I am just like Jekyll and Hyde. I am entirely a different person. My personality changes and everything. And everyone tells me I am a very elegant bitch. I love my jewelry. I have necklaces. I have chandelier earrings. I, I, I put everything on but the kitchen sink. Anything that sparkles is Tilly. A gay audience is the best audience to work for. Queens seem to appreciate you more. Tilly is Tilly, and I don't try to copy up of anybody. I am original, I am me, and I've been performing in Chicago for 37 years. Some have enough, and some have too much, and some like me could stand a whole lot more. This is the final show that I did. 
I wanted to come back and I wanted to do this because there's a lot of kids that had not seen Tilly. They didn't know what a Tilly was. I noticed you got a wedding band on, honey. Are you married? Sam? Oh, because I don't stop me, honey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, girls, don't try to fool your lover. Matter of fact, that is my choice, honey, married men. They come to my house, I gave them something their wives wouldn't give them. <laughs> Remember, he can go to Goodyear if he wants a robber. But now they're doing it too. Taking it up the ass and everything, honey. They ain't leaving nothing for us. Some men are leg men and some are behind men. Say, are my nails pretty? <laughs> But if he's a boobs a man, even a blind a man will find him. You gotta have boobs. B O O B S. And the crowd was beautiful. All my friends was there. They were very receptive, and I really enjoyed it. It, it made a lovely evening for me. Silicones are girls. Best. Take that thing away. A couple weeks ago, I was introduced to what I find to be one of Chicago's gay legends and uh, had an opportunity to meet Tilly. And the first and most interesting thing I learned about Tilly is, how do you spell your name, honey? T-I-L-L-I-E. I -E, no I. I wanted to be like Hildegard, one name. <laughs> and I started out with just Tilly, no last name. And the Roby Landers added the dirty old lady of Chicago on that. So now you're known as the dirty old lady of Chicago. Everywhere I go. And everyone you meet. <laughs> I am 75 right now, but in June 25th, I'll be 76. So, how old were you when you started? Started what? Started. I told you I was 38 when I came here. <laughs> and you walked into Chicago and said, I'm put on a dress. Here I am. No, yeah. I showed my pictures. I never leave the house without them. You know that. And uh, I showed my pictures to uh, uh, the manager of. of um, front page, which was the first gay bar I was ever in here in Chicago. And uh, he liked the looks of the pictures, and he asked me if I wanted to do a show. I said, sure. So I got up. There was a little tiny stage in the corner, and I started out with my Sophie Tucker. I'm living alone, and I like it. <laughs> Yelled above the record. <laughs> there was no instrumental version. No microphone, no spotlight, no nothing. Just belt it out, Louise. Right. Female <laughs> impersonation? Is that what you call it? Yes. Okay. Now, what's the difference between a female impersonator and a drag queen? A drag queen will put on a dress any time of the week and just walk the streets and go to bars. Mm -hmm. Female impersonator puts it on only when she gets paid. Okay. So you only put it on when you get paid. You're right, baby, and it's a job. <laughs> <laughs> and other way? <laughs> okay. Let's see. And then how did you decide that this was for you? How did you decide I'm going to put on a dress? I mean, I was always Nelly from the minute I popped out of my mommy's pussy. <laughs> or even when I went to school, mm -hmm. when I was going to grade school, I used to be called a sissy. Mm -hmm. Then when I went to high school, I was a cocksucker. <laughs> so they elevated me. Yes. Oh, yeah. I got elevated. Gay life has come up considerably since I first came out. Uh, I was 16 when I first knew I was this way. I thought I was the only one in the world. Right. And then, so how old were you when you went to your first gay bar? When I? When you went to your first gay bar? Well, you had to be 21. <laughs> You're like, in 21, I was being I never bar. lied. I never lied about anything. I never lied about my age. I was a park queen until I was 21. <laughs> then I, they got me at a bar, and now they can't get me out of them. <laughs> you know, Front Page was the first place I went here in Chicago. And you know, there was no gay-owned bars. Mafia owned all the bars. Oh, really? Any gay bar there was, Mafia owned. And uh, they just looked like a bunch of regular people just sitting around. I just yeah. sat at the bar, and, you know, 
but not very personal, and I, especially after I get a drink or two. And <laughs> I get very friendly with the next one to me or something, you know, start talking. Right. So in the movie Stonewall, they dealt a lot with the gay bars being mafia. What was your experience with that? Oh, well, I worked for the mafia when I worked at Chesterfield back in 61. Mm -hmm. So did you meet a lot of the famous mobsters? Well, no. Nick Del Sandro was the one who was the name uh, of the of front of the bar, you know, as if he was the owner, but it was really the mafia. So the mafia paid him? Of course, I uh, paid every week. <laughs> Rich was on the mafia payroll. Yes. So everyone calls me on um, Mobster Mall. <laughs> well, you know, Queens, you get booze and Queens, they like to talk and carry on. Some of them talk right even while you're doing your number. You know, they got no consideration at all. Uh, very impolite people. Right. <laughs> Unappreciative. How do you tell them to shut up? How do you tell them to shut up? Or do you just go on? I just go on. And then and when I get the microphone at the end of the show, then I tell them, I said, you goddamn bitches, your mouth is going louder than my fucking singing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy, it's yeah. not. So, would you do it all over again? I haven't regretted one minute of my life. Not one regret. Not one regret. That's fantastic. Um, so, what do you want people to remember you for? Oh, I don't know. Uh, for my friendship, uh, for the, the love of what I've done for them in the past and gave them in the past. Uh, and I am still remembered to this day from 1960, 64, 66. They remember me from the Chesterfield. Yeah. And that's where I really got my name. I became popular here in Chicago. And that's where it comes to it. That's where the time to it. We've been with Tilly, the dirty old lady of Chicago. And thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.